none of you were charged a fee to come to this workshop. And part of well, the reason why that's the case is because as an organization, we're committed to a set of principles called gift economics. It's not only because we want to make sure that our work is accessible to people, but because we want to change the paradigm of how we look at things like money and wealth and value and relationships. We're, we've been working in the county jail since April of 2012, and we've trained, I think there's about a thousand people, inmates, mm -hmm. that have gone through our two-day workshop in the county jails right now. We have not gotten paid for any of that. A lot of nonprofit organizations won't do the work until they receive the grant. But we always put our work first, knowing that if it's work that's meant to be out there, then somehow the universe will come back and support us. So the first principle of gift economics is there is no price, no fee. In a gift economic system, goods or services are offered for no price or fee. There's no request for any money or anything else in exchange for the goods or services that is offered. The offering is made out of generosity. <laughs> Most of us are used to this type of economic model, right? A market economic model. And in a market model, every exchange is bi-directional. So it has to be two people, at least two parties involved. I give to you, therefore you give to me. Goods and services are offered a monetary value, right? Like everything we sell, including our services, is assigned some monetary value, which sometimes feels a little weird. And also, when you assign a monetary value, it creates a financial barrier for a lot of people. So we, in a gift economics model, the exchange is unidirectional. We are offering you this workshop, period. Goods and services are priceless. I mean, this is Dr. King's legacy, right? The legacy of Dr. King should never be assigned a monetary value. And finally, because we don't set a fee, there's no barriers to participation and everyone is included. The second principle of gift economics is universal and voluntary giving to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. So instead of a request for money or anything in exchange, all recipients of goods or services that are offered are offered an opportunity to make a voluntary gift to help support us. So this is an opportunity for you to pay it forward so that we can continue to offer this workshop in the future. In a market system, the relationship is transactional, right? I give to you, you give to me. And it's motivated by a desire to receive something. I'm paying you this amount of money because I want that good or I want that service. And finally, the exchange really only benefits the two parties that are directly involved in that exchange, right? Whereas in a gift model, the relationship is transformational. So we're going from a transactional relationship to a transformational relationship. And we believe that it's transformational because it's not motivated by your desire to receive something, it's motivated by your desire to support other people. And therefore the exchange doesn't benefit just the people that are involved in the transaction, but it benefits future generations. Future. Giving in response to need. So the motivation for giving in a gift system is to help meet the needs of the recipient. So the information about the magnitude of the need is helpful for prospective givers to inform their decision about the magnitude of their gift. But in the market system, there's this idea that there's never enough, right? That's the idea of capitalism, is you constantly need more and more and more. And Whereas in a gift economic system, we acknowledge what it is that's actually our need and take only what we need out of our community. I've been working in nonprofit since I was 19 years old, and a lot of organizations would just get as much money as they possibly can and then figure out what to do with it on the back end. Whereas we've been very clear about our vision and the bare minimum that it's going to take to accomplish our vision, and not necessarily growing beyond that just because we can. But we know what's enough, and we don't feel a need to pull resources from our community beyond what we actually need. Principle number four is giving in proportion to one's ability. The participants in a gift system are invited to offer gifts that are in proportion to their ability to give. Everyone is invited to make a gift if they are able, and those that have a greater ability are invited to offer greater gifts. In a market system, everyone pays the same price regardless of their ability, and it conditions us to find the best deal possible, right? Pay the least amount to get as much as we can. That's kind of like what we're, uh, the, the habits that we grow up with. Right. In a gift system, it honors each person's story and their ability, and it reframes us to think about the collective responsibility that we have to meet the needs of the community. In a gift model, the people with more ability to pay, we're requesting that they consider paying more than their 
quote-unquote fair market share, which in itself is a revolutionary act. But this system only works when people who have more ability offer more. Principle number five, financial transparency. In a gift system, it functions best when the givers are able to know when the need has been met or how close or how far the need is from being met. This information feedback loop also helps givers to inform their decisions about the magnitude of their gift. In a market system, there's no financial transparency. It's really hard to find out how much money a corporation makes or how much money a corporate executive makes. Right? In a gift system, we believe in complete financial transparency. And the way we practice these is one, the workshop information feedback loop. So we just let you know that our goal is to raise about $5,500 throughout these two days we'll continue to let you know how close or far we are from that goal, and as a collective, we'll see if we can meet that goal. Another way we practice financial transparency is our budget transparency. Our entire budget, as well as our profit and income statements, is in the back of your book, and it's also on our website. People can go to that link, or go to our homepage, click one button, and see exactly how much money I made last year, see exactly how much money uh, we're, we're taking in, you see exactly how much we're spending every penny that we raise. And the last principle, and this is actually not one of the principles that David came up with, it's something that we added, and it's also the sixth principle of nonviolence, and that's that the universe is on the side of justice. Our work is an act of faith. We're offering this work to the world, and just having faith that if this work is necessary, then the universe will provide the resources to make it sustainable. And if it's not work that the, the, our community feels is, is important, then we're not gonna try to force resources away from a community that could use it for other things. When I started East Point, it was really, like I was just putting it out into the universe and saying, if this is meant to be, it's gonna be. If it's not, then it's not. I'll find something else to do, right? But we really want to put it out into the universe and have faith that the universe will answer the question for us.